It's a great pleasure for me to be here this morning and uh, to welcome you to the Oslo Financial Inclusion Summit, which I would very much have liked to attend myself. Unfortunately, I had to be in Abidjan and could not be with you in person uh, this morning. What I'd like to talk about maybe is a, a few of the major developments that we've seen in Africa and that uh, shape the potential and the whole landscape for financial inclusion. And the way I look at uh, developments here is of a continent that has made tremendous strides and um, where much remains to be done. It's a poor continent and so many of our indicators lag behind other areas. But uh, if you look at what is enabling today's financial inclusion, it's first and foremost was the mobile revolution that we witnessed about two decades ago here in Africa and that has had a, a tremendously powerful impact and a very deep impact that where we basically reached penetration of over 50 percent going starting from like two or three percent two decades ago so uh, we now have a signal that allows people to communicate that allows most of the population really to connect uh, with one another and with the economy that has had a tremendous impact on GDP growth but also on inclusion including financial inclusion the large mobile footprint has allowed e-money and uh, digital money e-money is really its birthplace not really its birthplace but where the place where it has grown fastest and, and fastest and earliest is really East Africa and Kenya in particular so we've seen a very rapid spread starting from Kenya then going to Tanzania but now pretty much all over Africa of mobile money enabling people to get access to finance enabling people to receive money from their relatives enabling people to pay in a cashless way some economies in uh, Somalia in particular uh, are economies that are primarily run on digital money these days so this creates another huge opportunity and uh, to me these are extremely positive developments and we at the African Development Bank are keen to continue to support them we have supported the connectivity agenda and we will continue to do so uh, I'd like to mention maybe two of our signature interventions which are financing of the Trans-Saharan Fiber Optic Network that uh, has enabled to connect a country like landlocked country like Chad or the Central African backbone that connected uh, Central Africa so two, two poor landlocked countries that in this way got connected to the broader uh, digital uh, networks and digital uh, global economy so continuing and expanding this connectivity and taking it to rural areas is the next challenge a challenge that will re require a lot of collaboration cooperation because it's hard to build infrastructure at scale if you have to compete with different networks so we need to find different models of expanding this connectivity in rural areas a second area that I'd like to emphasize in which in which we are also uh, very active and uh, clearly very important for digital financial inclusion is payment systems and here I'd like to highlight uh, two initiatives in West Africa the first one uh, with support from the Gates Foundation we're working with the central bank of the eight francophone West African countries to set up a system to ensure the interoperability of mobile money between not only the eight countries not only all mobile operators but also financial institutions so uh, working on a platform where you can pay from one bank in one country to a mobile account in another country in a seamless manner so uh, very important initiative there uh, another one we've worked on is the, uh, with the anglophone uh, countries of the region uh, we've helped uh, countries like Gambia Liberia uh, Sierra Leone but also Guinea in developing uh, payment systems and really putting their systems up to par with what is uh, already in place in countries like Ghana and Nigeria and thus enabling further integration of that uh, monetary uh, group so mobile signal development of payment systems and mobile finance 
are important drivers of financial inclusion. I'd like to emphasize maybe one aspect. Uh, what will it take for us to replicate in Africa what we achieved through this uh, mobile revolution? The mobile revolution wasn't that easy initially because you had vested interests that uh, uh, had to be overcome and you had to open up sector, create competition. Today, we have similar challenges, but the, the dynamic is slightly different. Uh, we have telecom companies that have become reasonably entrenched. We have banks and other financial institutions that are used to doing business in a certain way and operate in relatively protected markets. And then we have other uh, sectors of the economy that are also touched directly by the opportunities of uh, digital payments and digital fines and digital inclusion. Take, for example, solar energy, which has been spreading quite rapidly in Africa, enabled by the mobile footprint, by the digital money footprint, and by innovative services uh, by new companies kind of providing energy to places that before had uh, no uh, services at all. So we have different sectors that are over becoming overlapping sectors where operators from one sector start acting in another sector, where laws and regulations tend to be obsolete. They were designed to govern a traditional banking sector govern a traditional telecom sector. Now we have to create an environment that enables the digital economy, that enables and supports competition between all these operators, irrespective of the sector they're initially uh, coming from. And so that is definitely one of the challenges that we see. And we see this opportunity of technology opening up new horizons, but we have to ensure that policy and regulation and practices supported by some interest do not stand in the way. So there's a significant work to be done to move that agenda forward. The, the th third major point I'd like to focus on is really uh, how we plan to take this whole agenda forward uh, at the African Development Bank. We are uh, the founding uh, group together with the Gates Foundation and uh, uh, support from countries like Luxembourg and France of the African Digital Finance Initiative, ATFI. Uh, it's a, a partnership program, an open partnership program that really seem, seeks to accelerate digital financial inclusion on the continent, be it by supporting uh, stakeholders, by setting up payment system, by accelerating uh, solutions, uh, supporting innovation that will break through these uh, barriers and uh, expand the quality of services, the range of services and the footprint of services. So we have an ambitious agenda. We want to reach 80% financial inclusion by 2030 and we are open for business. We're launching officially at the African Development Bank's annual meetings uh, next June, but uh, we are keen to work with other partners. We had $40 million raised today. We seek to raise $100 million and uh, are keen to work with all of you, whether you are uh, financiers or donors, whether you are service providers, NGOs or innovators who can contribute to this agenda. So by way of conclusion, again, uh, sorry I can't be in person with you in Oslo. I wish you a very successful financial inclusion summit and I look forward to seeing you in Abidjan or elsewhere in Africa. Thank you.